Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. Guess where I am? I am at a supercharger on some one of the islands that's near Charleston right now. I'm going to attempt to drive back to my hotel on full self-driving 11.4.2, the new hotness. So anyway, I'm going to try to do it. Um, I don't know if you can see back there, but I'm at literally at the supercharger. So I'm going to put it in drive and then I don't know if it will immediately engage uh, the autopilot. It usually takes a little while for it to start up. So I'm not positive. I may have to start driving to make it actually engage, but we are going to attempt to go back. I hope I went to Anytime Fitness first and then I went here and I hope on the way back that we go over some of the cool stuff like bridges. Okay. I'm just going to start driving because <laughs> sometimes it does. It takes just a moment before it's like, oh, I see that I'm in full driving mode. So we will find out and I hope this microphone is working. Okay. Um, anyway, yeah, let's see if we can, there we go. Okay. So now let's go ahead and give it a shot. And, uh, anyway, so cool. All right. So we are in a parking lot and we will find out how this works. <laughs> I'm very excited to give it a shot. So anyway, uh, anyway, I, I downloaded it um, on the way to the Anytime Fitness, installed it while I was at the gym. And if you don't think that that's a little bit of a, a kind of a scary little prospect, right? Because here I am traveling, I'm not at home. It shows how much I trust Tesla to do what it need, what it's doing, right? Not to break the car or anything, because I could have been stuck at a gym at a place that's not anywhere close to my house, which would have been pretty disastrous. But I really, really trust their software team and how well they do on that. So let's see how this does with, okay. Because I don't believe those guys have a stop sign. So I handled that pretty well. Cool. And we should be going right. So cool. All right. Very smooth already. It, it feels really, really good. And let's see, I'm going to keep an eye out for on the left or on the right. I'm see it. Sorry. So anyway, as you know, now I've got a dash cam that's recording and sorry, we're on a trip. So there's some junk in the back that's kind of jiggling around. So, wow, that was really nice. It was like a two lane kind of like shift over that it just did that so naturally. I didn't even notice it. Anyway, I was just going to say, I apologize about there's some junk in the trunk, but not junk in the trunk. I did not mean that. Anyway, there's some, uh, some grocery bags and things like that. I don't know what, some freezer bags and stuff that are back there. So if you hear things shifting around and also I managed to miss breakfast because I do intermittent fasting until 10 o'clock and it's now 9.53 a.m. and they close breakfast, unfortunately, at 10. So I went to the gym. Anyway, it, the supercharger that I was at was right next to a Target. So I went and picked up a, a Naked Juice smoothie to have. And I, of course, will have my AG1 as soon as I get back to the house and um, or back to the hotel room. Anyway, uh, so yeah, it, hopefully I'm crossing my fingers that we will, we'll have to at least go across a bridge because I know that we are on an island right now and we have to go, I don't remember which island it is, but anyway, we'll have to go. So, okay, so we got the green light. So obviously we are in the far left-hand lane. This is not an unprotected left, obviously, since we have a turn signal. And, but it is a pretty severe turn with a berm and nice. Okay, cool. So it should be 15 more minutes or about six miles to go to, or 10K, <laughs> just so happens to be about 10K. All right, so it should, yep, okay, that is the correct answer. Uh, even as aggressive as I am, I wouldn't have tried, especially with the police car right there. <laughs> that would have been a little bit of a mistake to uh, have tried to go across that yellow of a light with a police car around, as a human being, I mean, but I really appreciate the fact that Tesla now seems to have kind of dialed in the yellow light situation. For a while, they were too aggressive and the light would change and then they would slam the brakes on even if you were practically under the intersection. But now it seems like what they've got is it, you know, if it's, if, if it's kind of unreasonable to slow down or stop, they'll keep on going, which is the correct answer. I mean, that's, that's what you're supposed to do with the yellow light. So, okay, good. All right. Thus far we are getting, um, I'm trying to, uh, oh, so just FYI for anybody who might not know, and let's see what this blue car does. So I, I would get around. Okay. All right. Well, that was cool. <laughs> That's exactly what I would do is just get around the, the slower moving traffic and, and do it to the right, obviously, since we're there. I didn't read whether that said it was to follow route or whether it was to get around slow traffic, but in any case, it was the correct move to do. And now we should make a right hand turn. Anyway, what I was going to say is for anybody who doesn't happen to know, I have one hand on the steering wheel at all times. I am monitoring the car. That's what I call it. It just basically means that I am ensuring that nothing goes wrong. And if I have to intervene, then I can grab the wheel. I can press the brakes. I can do things like that. So God, there's a bunch of junk that's just flopping around back there. Sorry. I hate that stuff. I hate when things jiggle around. 
So I apologize. Usually I keep the car cleaner than that. Uh, it took that very well. I mean, obviously that was a, a, a turn arrow. I'm also trying not to put too much weight on the steering wheel right now because I have heard from Dr. Scott Walter from Going Ballistic that at least on the highway, he believes it's more like 90 seconds between steering wheel nags if the situation is not, you know, if there's construction or if you're like <laughs> looking out the window or something like that, it'll nag you more frequently. But that under normal circumstances, it has extended the period of time prior to, wow, this is nice. I mean, man, it's just, it's doing what I would do. And that's the, the shocker to me is that for the longest time, the car would drive and it was safe, but it was like, oh, I'm so frustrated because it's sitting in this lane that it should be in the other lane and it should be doing this. And now it feels so much more assertive, like the way that I personally would drive. And I know, so you can flick this and you can put it in like average. Generally speaking, I leave it in assertive. Although I did find out one thing and I'll have to test it. I don't believe I'll be on the highway here for this one, but we have a nice long road trip up to my, my parents' house in a couple of days because uh, my, my mom is having surgery next week. So anyway, your thoughts and prayers for her would be much appreciated. But uh, anyway, we'll be doing a lot of highway driving then. But with 11.3.6, I found out from Scott that if you have it in average mode or normal mode, it will actually get out of the fast lane into the slow lane when people are coming up behind you quickly. In assertive mode, apparently it doesn't. And I, I'm a little frustrated with that because I'm like, just because I'm in assertive mode doesn't mean I should drive like a jerk. So I'm hoping that what will happen here is that um, the new version 11.4.2 will still get out of the fast lane if somebody's coming up faster than you behind you, even if you're in assertive mode. So I'll have to test that out. I don't believe that I'm going to have a chance. Yeah, I mean, you can see it's just <laughs> basically just going across here. So we do have a nice bridge we're going to go across. There are there these do have drawbridges. I don't know about this one. This one might be one of those big tall ones. But uh, I, I kind of was like, oh, it'd be kind of cool if we had to deal with the drawbridge and see what the full self-driving would do. I assume that that's a bit of a edge case. I don't live near water, so I don't get to you know, find out about that very often. But anyway, it's a, a, unfortunately, this is much less interesting than the way out to the Anytime Fitness. I, I, this is kind of a weird circumstance because I don't really know the area, of course. Normally, I would pick a route that I drive all the time. By the way, another really nice lane change it just did. Uh, I have not, I don't believe I've gotten a steering wheel nag yet, and I have been, you know, lightly touching the steering wheel, not, um, you know, kind of dragging on it to make sure that the car knows that I'm there. So it seems to be going much more confidently without needing to have the little reassurance as often as it has before. So anyway, it uh, looks like we got one and a half miles. Yeah, this is uh, unfortunately the other way was much more interesting because it was winding through all sorts of back roads and things like that. And I was using 11.3.6 to drive around there and it did a really good job. But this is unfortunately a little bit less interesting than it could have been. Sorry about that, such is life. It's what happens when you don't know where you're going and you can't like put in interesting places. I'm kind of wondering if I can create like an alternate route or something while we're doing this. Um, let me see, maybe, well, we got one and a half miles, so let's go ahead and try and see uh, if I can pick, maybe they have alternate routes that I can go on and I can pick something else that's a little, nope. <laughs> it's like, this is the route you will pick, so I guess that's the route I'm going. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, that's just relatively straight, but the interesting part about this is it dealing with traffic. Maybe I can just drop a pin. I'm just gonna drop a pin over here. Let's see if we can end the trip. Let's go ahead and just drop a pin and just, yeah, I'm going to navigate there. I have no idea where that is, but that'll be more interesting. Okay. And then from there, I'll go to the hotel. So yeah, <laughs> just to add a little bit more interest to kind of go through some like more residential maybe areas. Again, totally guessing. Don't know the Charleston area at all, but at least this will give us a little bit more interesting stuff to do and we can then hop over the bridge onto the peninsula itself and go from there. But um, looks like basically we're just going to take a right where we were going to take a left before, but such is life. All right. Heck, maybe. Well, let's just do something even more. Let's go back here. All right. Yeah. That's pretty cool, though. And by the way, it's still staying in full self-driving while I'm doing this. It's like, okay, here we go. All right. So maybe we'll get a couple of unprotected lefts if we have a little bit of luck. Again, no clue what I'm doing here. So... Oh, no, those are right. Well, at least one left up here. Okay. 
<laughs> at least we'll get off this road faster because I'm kind of bored myself driving on this road. Sorry. Not as good of a demo as the other possibilities were, but um, this will get us off the road and onto some other areas. And it looks like we will have a, uh, a left turn. And let me go ahead and put this in full screen for now. And I'll have to switch back and forth because I do. Um, I'll, I will have to keep an eye on where we're going because I don't know where we're going. But anyway. All right, so in a tenth of a mile, it should turn now. I'm curious whether it should be doing what that guy's doing. Okay, what is it doing here? Hmm, okay. <laughs> I guess it should probably get over right here if it's turning. Yep, okay. All right, so all right. So that was a bike lane. A little teeny bit of hesitancy, but it did good. Um, so I didn't have to. I didn't have to do anything. Uh, there was a Range Rover that was eating up my butt behind me, so <laughs> I was a little bit extra nervous about that. Okay, so we have 20 miles an hour and also a speed hump here. Ooh. Okay, it distinctly slowed down for that speed hump, which was good because that was a pretty big one. And uh, okay, so we're going right here instead of left, unfortunately, because this would be a good unprotected left. But it looks like it's going to be a good unprotected right with three cars in front of us. So. Now, I'm curious because it doesn't say that it reads the speed hump, but it, yeah, I mean, you can see it slowed down to 15 miles an hour to do that, so it definitely went slower. Um, okay, well, we're going to get a light, so I guess it won't be unprotected no matter what. So let me just check here. Do, do, do. Okay, cool. So we, we'll get a left definitely up there. <clears throat> and I would imagine, I'm going to take a guess that it'll be an unprotected left just because of the nature of the... Wow, this is pretty. Okay. Yeah, I was like, let's go, let's go see at least a little bit more of a pretty part of um, the Charleston area. Okay, cool. That was good. I, the, the lane changes are just like, ah. <laughs> they're they are qualitatively better than what we've been seeing before. I'm very very excited about that. All right. Also, let me know what you think about these. These are Boya microphones. I just got new ones. They, they The thing connects up. You can probably see it right there that it connects up to the bottom of the iPhone. They have, obviously, they have an Android version too, but it's very convenient um, for doing that. Okay, here, unprotected left, and it should go now. It's a little hesitant. Okay. Yeah, a little bit jerky on the steering wheel, but still did. <laughs> that was weird. Okay. It seems to be kind of, yeah, that was strange because that was definitely not quite finding the lane that it should have. All right. Man, so many speed humps around here. Um, okay. Doing better with that. So let me see. So we're going 28. So it should slow down. Yeah. Okay. Woo. Okay. It slowed down, but it did it too late. That was very, very late in the process. So it could definitely do better speed humps, um, you know, note to Tesla. So let's see, limiting speed for max road type. I think it's telling us that we had a stop sign there, but I don't believe we actually did. I think we had right of way there. Anyway, I guess ultimately better to be safe than sorry, right? And also notice that even though I have a slight speed offset, it's actually reduced the speed. Okay. Wow. Interesting. That was a... Uh, <laughs> that was a little bit of a violent swing. All right, at least we've gotten to do some interesting little turns and stuff here. It's been a little on the violent side. I guess that we are, yeah, I guess we're at our location. So, okay. So now let me go ahead and plug in the Hyatt place. Oops. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I don't know where it's going. It's just continuing on here. I don't know. I don't know where we're going at this point. It's just, I guess it's autopiloting itself. I don't know exactly quite where it's decided that we're headed, but once the uh, turn signal goes away, I will put in a uh, high place. Okay. So I'm not exactly sure. Well, this is cool. We're getting to do a little bit of tooling around on here. Cool. Okay. So let's see how it handles this car with the doors open. So it registers that the doors are open. Cool. All right. All right. I'm just going to like let autopilot take the wheel here. So again, monitoring it, but I have I don't think I've had any nag at this point. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> we're doing a little tour of this little Charlestonian neighborhood here, checking out the, uh, the stuff. I believe we're going to take a left coming out of here. Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. But again, we should have right of way, so it shouldn't even stop. It should just do that. It's very interesting how it's limited the speed limit to 25, even though I have a couple of miles an hour offset on it because I believe it feels like the road is too, uh, okay, so it shouldn't stop, it shouldn't stop, good, okay. Uh, I believe it feels like the road was too small and too narrow. So that's actually really cool to see that, that it's 
confident enough that it's like, nah, I'm going to slow down. Okay, so we're back to the speed hump. Let's see if it does a little better job. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, it's very... <laughs> could definitely go slower. It's, it's weird because I can feel it slow down like right as it gets there, but what it needs to do, of course, is... Oh, gosh. Yeah, that was very... Okay. <laughs> it definitely needs work on that. That, uh, that is not fantabulous. Oh, my goodness. It's going to try to take... Oh, it's taking a right-hand turn here. I thought it was going to try to take a left, and I was like, oh, good luck with that. That'll be, that'll be interesting. Should be able to go right right now should be able to go should be able to go should be able to go a little wussy on that okay a little wussy on that and here's a pothole little tiny one but still yeah ran right over that so again probably should be missing that uh speed humps definitely um it, it needs to, it needs to continue to work on that my parents have that right near their house as well and those things are huge and and a higher speed limit so you have to slow down a lot to go over those speed humps so it'll be interesting to see how the car handles that but clearly i'm sure you'll be able to tell from the way the car like that as it goes over that it was taking those speed humps at too high of a speed so okay interesting all right that was good i mean we clearly made it all the way through the yellow light without any problem that was like right on the cusp i would have been, accepted the car either going through or stopping i feel like both of those are pretty reasonable options at that point that's one of those ones where i would have had to make a spur of the moment decision so by the way i don't know if you can see this but the the new mount this was from gail alfar she uh when i was riding around with her in austin she showed me her mount and i don't think this is the exact same brand but i was like oh that's super cool so it's much more stable so hopefully instead of like this thing jerking all the time it's going to be a little bit more stable now now here's an interesting thing this other lane is entirely empty i would never sit in this lane so i will give the 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 navigation i'll give the full self driving a ding for that because it's completely illogical we have two miles on this road before we're going to turn so there's no reason whatsoever why the car should be in this lane we had all the time in the world i know there's cars coming now but we had all the time in the world to get over into that lane and it should have been in the less full lane whenever possible so i will always give human beings too if you ever ride with me i will give you a ding if you go into the lane that has more traffic in it unless there's a reason for it so anyway like we're doing a we're doing a non-intervention drive but under normal circumstances i would intervene then because i would get very frustrated with that okay so this is interesting we're coming up on a, uh, another pothole okay again it would be nice if it would avoid the potholes if possible it hopefully sees those all right so anyway i don't know what we're doing here but we're kind of going up into a little more urban apartmenty area and going across a little bridge okay i know where we are again so i remember this weird round holiday inn which is just before the bridge that goes back to the charleston peninsula oh so you will get to see the marina so that's cool the the marina is quite beautiful as we go across the bridge so keep an eye out for that as you're able to from the view of this camera back here all right so uh, 1.7 miles left and i guess it's all good um i have no idea which lane to be in since this is not my normal type of commute i haven't done this before so i think okay so yeah i was gonna say i probably would be in the lane off to the right but i guess it's decided it's okay so all right and then this is a drawbridge as you can see there's a green light there so it's not red i let me see if it registers this as a green light because if it does of course those are flashing yes okay so it registered that as a green light so anyway look out you can see the marina and everything so it should i would assume that before the gates even came down the light would turn red and so the car would have that clue to tell it not to go across because obviously you don't want to run into a drawbridge that would be a pretty tragic problem to have so okay so what do we have 1.2 miles to go still 1.1 miles and uh yeah and so i think this just takes us right onto king street we will have to make a left into the it's not really a parking lot area it's an alleyway that you go into to get to the hotel so i'll be curious that'll be an unprotected left that it will have to take at the very end. So that'll be interesting to see. Looks like it wants to go to the right up here, interestingly enough. I don't know quite why, but uh, yeah. So it definitely turned that car blue and oh, well, I have no idea. <laughs> it worked really well. I mean, I maybe it knew something about the traffic. That was a, that was a move. Okay, so you remember when I said I dinged the car 
Okay, so it might have just been getting into this lane because it knew that this was the only straight lane. I don't know. But I did ding the car previously for being for parking it in a lane with traffic that was backed up. That time it got out of the way of traffic. Now, it could have just been luck because it might have just been that it knew it had to be in this lane. So it was sort of cheating with navigation data. This should be King Street, I'm assuming, since I think we're just going for another 0.7 miles. Uh, no, according to this, it's Cannon Street right now. Really, really interesting. Charleston is a very, very old city in the United States, and so there's a lot of houses built in the, uh, even as far back, I believe, as the 1600s. But they, the streets here were like king, church, st uh, state, meeting. Um, uh, anyway, a bunch of very interesting names. Okay, this is interesting here. This will be cool. So anyway, they're very cool names. I'm curious what... All right, I'm curious what's going to happen here because I believe that there is an emergency vehicle. So I, I don't know. I can't see around this bus, unfortunately, so I don't know where we're going. But uh, I think we're going to have to make a left. Oh, now what is the car going to do? Okay, you have some time to figure this out, car. What are you going to do? <laughs> it cannot go there. So... Um, it does not appear to be able to handle this. Okay, that is interesting. So I'm going to, uh, it's definitely got a noodle. I think I'm going to have to intervene here because I think the car is completely confused as to what to do next. So anyway, I guess I'll, oh no, I can't even go right because that's a one-way street. Okay, I'm going to have to, going to have to force it to go left, I believe, but I'm very curious. So, okay, so I think we have six seconds left. Just a few seconds left on the walk light, and um, there are cars coming, so I'm, I'm going to have to... Yeah, for safety reasons, if it doesn't decide... If it tries to go straight, I'm definitely going to have to take it out of full self-driving. So, um, let's see if we can ask it to go left here. Okay. Nope, okay, yeah, I did have to take it out, so... That is a... There you go. That's an edge case. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Let's take it on there. The car could not figure out that it needed to reroute due to an emergency vehicle. Hopefully that is relatively succinct. So yeah, it's rerouted itself fine, but I did have to take it out because when I, I pushed the accelerator to see if it would make the turn, I, I had actually engaged the turn signal, but it attempted to go straight even though I told it to. I think it was going to do that. So that's unfortunate. I mean, I feel like that's almost an unfair thing because it's like, man. <laughs> but again, you know, the car does need to be able to go like, oh, I can't get through there. That's an emergency vehicle. There is no way that I can do that. So I need to figure out how to reroute. So anyway, it obviously figured that out right away as soon as I re-engaged it, but it did not do that originally so unfortunate that was like oh well that's <laughs> what happens that's why the world is so complicated there's a there's a situation that the car was just simply not equipped to handle at this point so i don't know if it's going to attempt to drive back over now or if it's going to go straight for a while so okay hmm, interesting all righty so anyway we're close I'm, I'm very sad about that because the car has driven exceptionally well so far and I would love to be able to say it was completely a no intervention drive, but there's definitely that. But, you know, what are you going to do? Honestly, my, my 15 year old probably by now would understand what to do. But back in, again, you know, if you think about this as a learning driver, during the first like month or so in which he had his learner's permit and he was learning, he would have frozen at that intersection too. So it felt kind of like one of those like, uh oh, what do I do moments? I mean, it definitely understood. It wasn't trying to go anywhere. It wasn't trying to blast into that area because it definitely recognized that there were vehicles there and that it couldn't go. But it also just didn't quite understand what it was supposed to do. And I think it just got stuck and just couldn't figure it out. So I don't know if I hadn't intervened. If there wasn't traffic behind me, I would have left it and let it sit for a while. But I didn't feel like I could do that without, you know, endangering <laughs> or at least inconveniencing people. Okay, so we're just going to... That's weird. I thought we were on King Street before. Okay. I guess we were not. We were crossways to King Street. <laughs> Shows how much I know the neighborhood. <laughs> we get very, very spoiled by GPS and stuff. And this is a really easy city to get around. I just was like 
King Street runs north-south, and I'm going east right now. So clearly I was not on King Street. I guess I had just mistaken it. But the good part about this is that we had... It was an easy reroute because it was simple enough to do this. Now, this is interesting because this car does have the right-of-way, but I'll be curious to see what it does. Good confidence. Excellent. Okay. That was really good. You know, because even though it does have the right-of-way, there's that, that was, a, you know, it felt a little bit like a San Francisco moment where there's a lot of people sort of aggressively crowding into the intersection. So it needs to make sure that it understands how to handle this. So this is King Street here. Okay. Got it. All right, so we're going to have to make a right and then an immediate left into the parking lot area, which is a an alleyway thing. So this will be really interesting to see how this handles it. So you've gotten a nice little tour of the Charleston area while we're going. So this is the historic district. King Street um, and Market Street are the two kind of biggies. And there's tons of really cool stuff. Last night they had sort of a block party and they closed off traffic for part of King Street and they had a band playing and a bunch of food trucks. So it, it was a lot of fun to, uh, to wander around with my son while, while Misinformation is at her conference, which I believe ends at 12 or 1 or something like that. Anyway, so we've done it a bit. Then we're going to take a day. Okay, so how's it going to handle these humans? All right pedestrians on the crosswalk area so they definitely now I'm curious also about these folks who are potentially yep definitely walking across all right so go all right all right and now it's going to have to make a very very rapid uh unprotected left where is the turn I don't even know where it is <laughs> uh oh okay okay so it thinks the navigation's done so that's as far as we go i guess it didn't see that it was back there so all right i'm not going to count that as an intervention because that was just a lack of navigation data all right so uh the valet person is going to come because unfortunately in order to do in-out parking you have to do valet but so let me conclude quickly here um i i had I thought that was excellent. I, I was really blown away by how well, particularly, the lane changing was going. The uh, you know the unfortunate incident of having a very bizarre situation of a fire truck and cars parked across was a very uh, unfortunate situation. Otherwise, it would have been easily no intervention, like not even an issue. Like it was very very clearly no interventions except for that. So I don't know what you want to do if if you want to give full self driving a gimme for that one or not or a mulligan or something like that. So you can either count it as one intervention or none. I don't believe I had a steering wheel nag ever. Maybe once during the entire drive. So that was really cool too. Very convenient. We will do a highway drive with this within the next couple of days, like I said, as we drive up to the Washington, D.C. area. In the meantime, thank you all so much for watching, and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.